Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening from and whatever time it is. It's Ian here from over50travelandlifestyle.com. And today's video, we're talking all about the Brisbane International Cruise Terminal, the, the new Brisbane International Cruise Terminal down at Pinkenbar at the mouth of the Brisbane River. We're going to cover off a lot of things today, everything you want to know, but more importantly, everything you need to know. We're going to cover where it is, how you get there, what are the parking, what are the parking alternatives, getting around once you're there, and the facilities, or rather, lack of the facilities. It's... Uh, it's pretty barren at this point in time. First off, where is it? People in Brisbane are used to cruising out of the Hamilton Portside Wharf. Uh, that is no longer in operation for any ships of any size at all. Every cruise ship now departs from the new Brisbane International Cruise Terminal down at the mouth of the Brisbane River at Pinkin Bar. You can see there it's been marked on the old Google Maps. Very close to the airport, but it's not as quick and easy to get to the uh, ter cruise terminal from the airport as you might think. Taxis are going to cost you a few dollars and it'll take you about 15 to 20 minutes. It's out in the middle of nowhere in a heavy industrial area. And those little black circles just to the left, that's the Luggage Point Sewer Treatment Plant, the biggest treatment plant, sewer treatment plant in Brisbane. So in the summer, if the wind's blowing the wrong way, she might get a bit, uh, bit on the nose out there. But anyway, at least we now have a deep water port where all the large ships can come in. If you're liking the video, please don't forget to hit the old like, subscribe button and the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Here you go, you can see the route here from the airport to the Brisbane terminal. If you're coming in on the airport, the domestic station there, it's about 14 and a half kilometers. It's a 16 minute ride, according to Google, through some beautiful parts of industrial Brisbane. 13 Cabs uh, app tells us that it's approximately a 40 to $50 cab ride. One thing I need to warn you of, make sure when you get in the cab and tell them where you wanna go that they're turning the meter on. There's been a few scammy mongrels who are not turning the, the meter on and then trying to charge people 60, 80, $100 for when they get there. Make sure your driver puts the meter on the second you jump in the cab and the old Uber, same deal from the airport to the cruise terminal, somewhere between 27 and 32, $33. Do need to be a little bit careful. They've got a habit of mornings of uh, some of these bigger ships coming in. Uh, sorry about the noise there. Some little birds have decided to have a bit of a chat fest outside my window. Uber. So I've heard quite a few reports of them putting a surge on on the mornings of cruise ships, particularly from the airport, which is a bit of a dirty trick. And when you book your Uber or your Ola or your Diddy, just have a look whether they've got surge pricing on it. it may be cheaper and uh, safer to get a cab. Now, parking at the actual Brisbane Cruise Terminal has to be done, it's best to be done on parking. You can see here the days, it's open every day of the week. You save quite a bit of money booking online and you're also guaranteed of getting a spot. For 14 days, you're up for about 120 bucks and obviously it goes you know, down from there. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but you know, for people that are local, uh, it's not too bad, I suppose. We're lucky we're only about a half an hour drive and we can get a cab each way for uh for about 45 50 dollars so it's about the same equivalent to parking there for a couple of weeks but it, obviously with a cab it's just a lot simpler and you'll see why so make sure you hang around to the end i've got some videos from each of the different car parks giving giving you an indication of how far it is from the furthest car park here which you can see park car park three on the far left hand side car park two in the middle Car Park 1, P1, the premium car park with some undercover spots, but very difficult to get into. And then you've got the drop-off areas for taxis, ride chairs, etc., coaches. The green rectangle on the right-hand side is the cruise terminal. So as you can see there, it's a fair walk P3, and we'll show that in a bit more detail next. P1, premium car park. It's approximately 50 metres to 220 metres from the furthest car park up to the building ent uh, entrance. Most of the car parking there is under shade. Car park two, between 250 and 390 metres to the entrance of the terminal once uh, you've parked. So it's getting a little bit further. And then the surprising one, 
Car Park 3, it's 420 to 575 metres if you're in the furthest spot. Now, I don't know about you, but 575 metres in Queensland summer, humidity, yuck. 500 metre walk, dragging luggage in 34 degrees and high humidity, yet yeah, not idea of a good time, but they're the options. In my point of view, the best option would be to get a taxi or a ride share, to be perfectly honest. You're not gonna save a huge amount of money, but you're gonna get dropped off right out the front and save yourself a lot of grief and a lot of hard work. Now, if you're you know, in your 20s or 30s, you know, 500 metre walk's probably not a big deal, but considering the general demographic of cruising, and the general age of a lot of people, you know, it's not the greatest planning having to walk four or five hundred metres in the middle of summer. There's also, obviously, uh, private charters, elite transfers, Connexion. There's quite a few. If you just look up private cruise terminal transfers on Google, you'll find uh, quite a few of them. Definitely worth looking at if you've flown in the day before, say, and staying in a local hotel get a, um, you know, a transfer from your, your hotel in Hamilton or the city out to the terminal for about 100 bucks each way in a nice Mercedes or BMW, or you can get one of the minibuses that are running around. Another option is Andrews Airport Parking in Nudgee. You can park your car there, secure facility. They don't have anything on their website about the cruise shuttle bus, but I've heard from many people that if you give them a call, it's not even on their website, but if you give them a call, they are doing cruise transfers from the parking area down to the terminal. Another one is portside cruise parking, bit of 50-50 whether they are working or not. I haven't been able to get confirmation yet. Bit of a zoomed out view. You can see where the cruise terminal is there, the red square and the big red arrow. And all these little navy blue dots are all the nearby hotels. You can see there's quite a few there in Hamilton, uh, quite reasonably priced. And then you move up into uh, Fortitude Valley, the city and the, uh, the inner suburbs on the side there. But quite a few good ones in Hamilton. One that I've stayed in uh, with my wife a couple of times is the Riverview Hotel. Really handy to everything. And uh, you've got plenty of options for uh, accommodation on the night before you cruise. Here we are starting off at car park three so i went out there a few weeks ago when the carnival luminosa was in for its first day in brisbane port and its official welcome to brisbane and shot these videos i deliberately parked as far away as i could in car park three to give you an idea of what you're in for so zooming over zooming around turning around there you go you can see the carnival luminosa there and you can barely see the cruise terminal building. It's just on the left-hand side there behind that row of cars. You can just sort of see the roof sticking up. We move down a little bit further. There's the car entrance to car park two. Again, this is the furthest point of car park two. So we're now panning around, having a look. Ship looks a bit closer in the building. The cruise terminal itself is just that little bit more visible now you can see the and the uh, beautiful carnival luminosa sitting there ready to go once you get to car park two about halfway down there are some seats where you can have a break uh, unfortunately there's no shade but you can definitely have a break there and at least give your legs a rest now we're up looking at the entrance to car park one the premium car park you can see the entrance there see the roof area and the all the parking availability and as you can see it's still a Bit of a walk to the terminal, not a long way, but you've still got a bit to go. Next up, as I we was saying earlier, this is where the Ubers, the Yolas, the taxis, etc., will drop you off. Much more convenient, much quicker and easier from here to get into the terminal. Undercover, you've got shade, you've got protection from the rain and the elements. Probably the best way to go. And then uh, once you've parked and you've dropped your bags off at the far left of the building, You've still got to work your way upstairs to the cruise check-in and then you've got immigration and security and everything else and you've got to work your, walk your, work your way all along this very long building, often having to spend some time waiting in queues, etc., for your check-in, for your security, for your passport, all your way through that building. Then you get down onto the gangway and you've still got a bit of a walk. It's still a bit of a walk. Being a deep water port and in the river, they've had to obviously have the ships anchor offshore a little bit. It's 
a bit still a bit of a hike, but you know, basically once you get there, you've you've pretty well made it. Lastly, talking about facilities, the two time we've been there for a cruise, and there was a little coffee van out the front selling coffee and muffins at very high inflated prices, but that was it. When I went there for the Carnival Luminosa, I welcomed the Brisbane ceremony. It was the same deal. If you look at on the Port of Brisbane and the map of the cruise terminal building, it does say there is supposed to be a coffee shop on the ground floor, but it's not open. It's not even started to be set up yet, so I'm not sure when that's going to happen. Other than that, you've got some toilets. The air conditioning was very efficient both times I was there, but you do have a lot of walking. It's not a great setup. It's good for Brisbane in that we can now get the big ships in. gives people a lot more options for sailing out of Brisbane but overall it's not the greatest setup it really is a long hard hot walk in 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 the summer if, particularly if you're a bit elderly or you've got mobility issues or anything else uh, I think they could be running some possibly running some shuttle buses on cruise days I think that would be a good idea from the, for the Brisbane Port Authority to do that that would certainly make life a lot easier for everyone Overall, though, it is very efficient once you're in there, but just be aware that you are going to have a fair walk to get there. It is out in the middle of nowhere. There's no shops. There's no petrol stations. When I've been there, there is one little coffee van out the front, and once it starts to get really busy and you've got 40 or 50 people in front of you, you'll probably reconsider and just wait till you get on the ship. Other than that, good facility. Gives us options. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, if this has been useful, if you've learned something from this video, please don't forget to hit the like subscribe buttons below helps me out helps the channel out helps this information get out to other people who may have the same questions that you have otherwise thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to have a look at these other videos that are posted right here thanks and we'll see you next time